Hey guys, today we get to start talking about Earth in Space Sciences for 8th grade. So we're going to start off talking with the geologic time scale and how that is used to organize our Earth's geologic history. So get excited for Earth in Space Sciences. Let's do it and always remember, science rocks. All right, get out that science notebook and you might create a new section titled Earth in Space Science. So take notes and draw pictures as you follow along. Go ahead and copy down these 29 vocab words. Remember they go in ABC order like this. And just come back later and create your own definitions of these words. So like always, use your own words and draw pictures. So go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing down the vocab words. All right, let's talk about Earth through time. So scientists can learn about the history of Earth by studying rocks and fossils. The Earth has changed over time. Uniformitarianism is a geological principle stating that processes shaping the Earth today operate the same way as they did in the past. Another way to state it is that the present is the key to the past. The present is the key to the past. So environmental conditions on earth change constantly. Some changes cause major impacts while others have more minor effects. Events that have caused major environmental changes in earth's history include catastrophic events such as floods, fires, or volcanic activity. So fossils are remnants or traces of organisms that are preserved in these layers of rock. If an organism gets buried under sediment, the soft parts will decay while the hard parts, you know, like bone, teeth, undergo a change to become preserved in the sediment, which becomes a rock. So fossils are most commonly found in sedimentary rock which forms as layers of material settle upon each other, press together, and harden over time. As time passes, new layers form upon older layers, and fossils are buried deeper and deeper in the ground. So this means that fossils found in lower layers of sedimentary rock are older than fossils found in upper layers of sedimentary rock. Geologists study rocks and fossils in order to learn about the Earth's history. So a very important part of this process is figuring out the age of different rocks and fossils. This enables geologists to determine the order of events in Earth's history and how the Earth has changed over time. So relative dating is a method in which the age of an object or event is determined relative to some other object or event. So, for example, a geologist may determine that one rock layer is older than another rock layer based on their positions in a sequence of rock layers. So, the principle of superposition states that younger rock layers form on top of older rock layers. So in this picture, you can see the older layers on the bottom and the younger layers form on top. So this would be the very youngest layer. And then we have the principle of original horizontality states that sediment is deposited in horizontal layers. So sedimentary rocks form as horizontal, this is horizontal, horizontal rock layers from this sediment. Okay, horizontals across like this. All right, and then you have the principle of cross-cutting relationships states that geologic feature is younger than the features it cuts across, okay? So according to the law of superposition, fossils found in lower rock layers are older, so these would be older fossils, found in the rock layers above. So these would be the younger fossils. 
Scientists learn about Earth's history by studying the rock and fossil records. We've talked about this. So based on these pieces of information, scientists have divided Earth's history into distinct intervals of time on this geologic time scale. So the geologic time scale is the span of Earth's entire history organized into smaller increments of time. So each increment is defined by the types of organisms that were abundant during that time. And this information has been collected from the fossil record by scientists. The largest subdivision of time on the geologic time scale is an eon you see up top. We are currently in the Phanerozoic eon. See, there are only two eons. Eons are divided into eras. We are currently in the Cenozoic era. Notice there are five eras shown. One, two, three, four, five. So eras are divided into periods and epochs. And this diagram of the geologic time scale shown uh, displays time intervals from the oldest, so this is the far, less, far left, the oldest, to the most recent, the far right, up until today. Um, so a common way to organize geologic time also is to break it down into four main intervals. So the first inter interval is Precambian time. All right, which accounts for all of Earth's history before the Paleozoic era. And after Precambian time, Earth's history is divided into three eras, right? You see them here one, two, three. Okay, um, so beginning with the Paleozoic era and the Mesozoic era, era and the Cenozoic era. So the intervals would be one, two, three, four. Each of the three errors, remember, can be divided into periods. Okay, so here's the periods of the Paleozoic era, and here's the periods of the Mesozoic era, and here's the periods of the Cenozoic era. So the current era is Cenozoic, and the current period is Quaternary period. And remember, each period can be divided into epochs, okay? So the current epoch, which is a part of the quaternary period, is Holocene. All right, let's look at some geologic maps. They are used by geologists to share information about the rocks in a certain area. The colors on a map represent the type of rock that is at the surface. Different colors and patterns are used on geologic maps to show different types or ages of rocks. Areas colored red represent granite rock from the Mesozoic era. So if you look at this red and then find it on the map, that's where you would find that. In addition to the types and ages of rocks, geologic maps will sometimes include symbols to mark other geologic features, such as fault lines. So in this map, Fault lines are labeled with solid black um, or dotted black lines. You can see right here, right here. All right, practice question time number one. This image shows a landform made up of many layers of sedimentary rock. According to the law of superposition, the blank layers are located at the bottom and the blank layers are located at the top. So pause this and see what you would fill the blanks in with. Okay, so since layers of sediment build up over time, each layer is built on top of another older layer. So this process results in a time progress progression from one layer to the next. So according to the law of superposition, the oldest layers of sedimentary rock tend to be located at the bottom of landforms, while the youngest layers are at the top. 
So that's going to go with A. All right, number two, the diagram below represents a series of rock layers from a single location. Each different type of shape shown in the layers represents a fossil of a different species. Suppose the blue star, okay, so these blue stars right here, suppose the blue star represents a certain fish species. When did this species go extinct at this location? Okay, so pause this and see what you think. All right, so rock formations and fossils can provide evidence of major events in Earth's history that we've talked about, including the extinction of particular organisms, like maybe this fish species. So in this example, the fish species left behind fossils in the Permian and Triassic geologic periods. Okay, that's where you can find the blue stars. But its fossils, which are represented by the blue stars, remember, um, do not appear in any more recent rock layers. So this indicates the species went extinct at the end of the Triassic, which is C. Number three, periods in geologic history have different names. So this geologic map labels the rocks in central California by their historical period. All right, so the Sacramento Valley is mostly colored tan on the map. So what period are most of the rocks from the Sacramento Valley? All right, so take a look, pause it, and see what you think. All right, so the key provides the information needed to interpret the colors on the geographic map. So here's your key, here's your map. So the key shows that the areas colored tan, okay, here's tan, um, are from the quaternary period of geologic history. So that's going to be D. All right, number four, life forms have changed throughout Earth's geologic history. Scientists learn about these changes by studying the fossil record. For example, scientists have learned when different groups of organisms first appeared. These events can be placed within specific periods on the geologic time scale, which is shown. Okay, here's the periods right here. Dinosaurs first appeared during the Triassic period. And large mammals first appeared during the tertiary period. Fishes with jaws first appeared before both dinosaurs and large mammals. So before that. Using this information in the geologic time scale, choose the period in which fishes with jaws first appeared. So pause this and see what you think. All right, so fishes with jaws first appeared during the Silurian period, okay? The provided information states that fishes with jaws first appeared sometime before the first appearance of dinosaurs, okay, which they talked about how that was Triassic, okay, which is right here, and large mammals, which is tertiary, okay? So, which is right here. And of the answer choices given, the Silurian, this one right here, is the only period before both the Triassic and the Tertiary. So, the Silurian period is right here. So, we're going to go with A. These other choices right here would have been after, okay? So A is it. All right, number five, last one. The diagram below shows several rock layers and other geologic features. Each feature is labeled with a unique letter. The order of the letters do not necessarily reflect the order in which the features formed. So examine the diagram and answer the question that follows using the principles of original horizontality superposition and cross-cutting relationships determine which of the following features is the oldest. Oldest. So pause this, look over your answer choices, and see what you think. Okay, so a lot to explain here, but of the features listed, layer M 
is going to be the oldest. So let's talk through this, okay? The horizontal sequence of layers H, I, and J is above the igneous intrusion. The igneous intrusion is this G thing right here, okay? So H, I, and J are above that. And the tilted sequence of layers M through R, see how you have M, N, P, Q and R, these are the tilted um, sequences of the layers. Um, so let's see, layer I must be younger than the other listed features. Okay, so layer I is up here towards the top, so that's going to be younger. So we're not going to pick that one. Okay, um, igneous intrusion G cuts, uh, really it cross cuts layers M, N, P, and Q. So M, N, P, and Q, okay, is cross cutted. So it must be younger um, than the remaining answer choices of M, N, Q. Okay, so G goes all the way up here, and then we had left M and Q, and G goes a little higher. So we're going to mark off G for being young. Okay, so finally layer M down here, layer M is below layer Q. Here's Q. So layer M is towards the bottom, remember, is the oldest. So M must be the oldest of the listed features here. All right, guys, so after you have fully mastered the first topic under Earth and Space Science, the geologic history, you should be able to create a project or a presentation or an experiment, something to show your teacher that you can explain all of this.